Alrighty, welcome back to the weight room. Just want to remind you to subscribe wherever you're listening now. Other than that, let's get started. I really appreciate you coming on, and um, if you just want to kind of introduce yourself, we can start this thing off. So my name is Sophia on Instagram. It's Sophia S underscore fit. Uh, I'm 25 years old, and I got a bit of like an English British accent because I lived in England for four years to study. But I am from Norway, um, Oslo. I'm into training. I want to compete in bikini fitness, but as we'll probably touch on later, uh, Corona kind of made that not happen. <laughs> right. uh, and yeah, I've like always been into like health and fitness. So you said you spent a little time in England. You said, yeah. So what was that? When yeah. did you when did you uh, move there for for that period of time? So I moved. It was in 2015 uh, to go to uni. So I did a bachelor in marketing uh, first, and then I stayed for another year and did a master's degree in uh, digital marketing and analytics. So in total, I stayed for four years. Is that somewhere that you know you enjoyed being versus where you're from? Or- it was kind of strange because when I was in England, so I lived in Winchester, which is like an hour from uh, London. Um, I was... When I was there, I loved it. Like, I didn't miss home. I Like, obviously, I missed my friends and family, but, like, I didn't miss Oslo. Uh, but then if I went home for Christmas or the summer, it was the same. I, like, absolutely loved being home, and I didn't miss going back to Winchester. So it was very, very odd because wherever I was, I was really happy, and I really liked it there. But after my bachelor year, when I was moving back home to Oslo, I was like, I'm, I don't feel like I'm done with England. Like, I feel like I have have some more in me like I still want to live there so that's why I did my master's also in England uh but after I moved back after my master's I felt like I was done if that makes sense gotcha I didn't like now I could probably move back to England and live there for like a couple of years but I, I, I don't think I would settle what kind of cultural differences are there on surface they seem really like similar uh in Norway we also have a culture for drinking but in England it's a bit more like pub culture like you would go to the pub uh watch football like have a pint eat and you eat out a lot more than you do in Oslo because obviously in Norway eating out is really expensive and drinking like out is also very expensive compared to England uh so when I lived in England I would eat out like far more than I do now like now it's maybe like every other month whereas in England it'd be like everything from like once a week to like five times a week <laughs> if it like so I think in terms of like eating culture in England you would like eat out more and it's probably like more unhealthy food and you'll drink a lot more too yeah that's pretty interesting I've never really heard that here in America that it's kind of the same as it is in England you know a lot of people eat out there's not you know there's still plenty of people who cook and home cook meals and everything like that but it's certainly kind of transitioning over the years to to less like family dinners, more eating out, you know, grab and go kind of deal, less, you know, more unhealthy foods, um, stuff like that to where um, it's kind of cool to, to hear the, the other side of that. So tell us a little bit about how you got into fitness and, and really where that started. Well, I've always been like sporty. I did handball uh, from I was like six so. 12 and then I played football or soccer as you call it in America uh, from I was I think 14 so uh, I quit two years ago when I moved back home so I've always been very sporty and I've always enjoyed like outdoors going skiing like activities and then in school <laughs> it was a guy I really fancied and he was like into the gym so it started to basically just to impress him <laughs> because I wanted him to like fancy me back. So I would go to the gym to like, because I knew he would be at the gym. Uh, but that was like 10 years ago, I think. I think I was like 15 when I started. Uh, and I would be like in the beginning, it would be like very on and off. I would go for like a couple of weeks and then I have like a couple of months off and then I'll go. And football would always like be before the gym and obviously have training quite a bit so I wouldn't go frequently and then I think my second year of uni 
I started becoming a bit more into the gym and taking it a bit more seriously and like actually doing some reading up on like how training works and like following a program and actually making progress. Uh, and that's when I got hooked, when I like started to make progress. I was like, oh, this is actually really cool. Uh, and I started to be more into the gym and less into football. How serious was the training for uh, for sport? Most of the time it would be like half serious. And then my second year of uni, I started to be a bit more, or maybe it was even third year, I was starting to be a bit more like, oh, maybe I should actually put some effort in. But I think that came from the gym because when I saw how putting effort into the gym gave results, I was like, oh, maybe I can actually apply this to other aspects of life. It actually like influenced my school and football as well because I understood that the more effort you put in, the better outcome you will have. Uh, so I think that's something the gym taught me. So after I started to do that with football, it became more, like more fun because obviously I became better. But then I always prefer the gym over football. If that makes sense. What was that trigger to to start kind of taking it more seriously? And then what what changes did you make within that fitness experience to like start seeing those results? Well, in the beginning, I would go like. One week I would go three days, the next week I wouldn't go, and then I would go four days. And then my diet was just off, like, 100% off. I didn't eat vegetables. I would have, like, pizza every day. And, it, it like, thinking back, I'm like, how did I even function eating that? And then, so when I started reading up on the gym, I would also read up on, like, diet and nutrition. And actually, like, when I gained some knowledge around that, I would change how I ate and I would start to like eat more vegetables uh, I would slow I, re- I remember I would slowly like try one new vegetable every week because I just never ate eaten them because I don't know why but when I was younger I just didn't want to and mom didn't force me so I just like broccoli I'd never tried it and then I tried it for the first time and I was like oh this is actually really good <laughs> so I, like I think for my first and second semester of my second year of uni I would have a different vegetable every week just to like get it into my diet and I would start tracking macros as well because I read online that it was a good way to like measure how much you eat and how much you should eat and I started to like be more consistent with my training so I would go instead of going five days one week and zero the next I would go like three or four days a week and try to like stick to it and I also cut down on my drinking because when I was like especially my first year of uni I would drink like almost every day uh, because there's just a culture for it and especially when you're a fresher uh, you like you go out you make friends and it's a lot of alcohol so I cut back on that as well so I think it was just like the structure and being more just more put put a bit more effort in and being more consistent what has kept you motivated to train you did say you wanted to do competitions that unfortunately because of COVID kind of derailed that a little bit but are you still trying to you know train for those yeah so the plan now is to compete in 2022 because this i was gonna so i've just been on a diet for how long was it i think 16 weeks from the end of september till just before christmas i was on a diet because i was meant to compete this spring but both of those competitions are cancelled uh and I'm just, I'm just like, it's so risky to hope that they will be on in September because of Corona, like we would, would know. So instead of being, having the stress of like, will the competition be? Will it not happen? Will the gym shut again? Uh, and the gym is shut now. So I can't really train properly for competing anyway. So I decided to postpone it till 2022. So now, uh, like currently now, the gym is shut in, Oslo in Norway is open but Oslo is shut because of Corona so I've started running again I, I do enjoy running but I haven't done it in forever so I'm very unfit so that's what I'm doing now have you ever done any races running you know just doing a 5k or some kind of race like that I was training to do a half marathon but then my foot started acting up so I couldn't really run because my Achilles was really like really tense and sore so I couldn't run for a couple of weeks that didn't happen when I was playing football I would go for a couple of runs every week and I've done like I've done a fair bit of running and my dad is a bit of a like 
running nerd. So, so he he has a lot of experience and knowledge about it. So I would like go to him for tips and tricks and like how to monitor your heart rate when you run and like where your heart rate should be at during like long runs versus short runs and like best ways to train intervals and stuff like that. I, so luckily I have my dad to go like help me with all of those things. When I started running now, I, my first run was like two kilometers and like it killed me. And now tomorrow I'm going to go for 10 kilometers. So it's fun to see how and how quickly you can progress as well if you like structure your training a bit. It is just yeah. really cool to see what your body can do because it, it is so capable of adapting. Yeah, that was one of the things I really enjoyed about being on Prep to Bikini Fitness because obviously then I had a coach and he would program my training and I would just see so much progress. Like obviously I put in like 100% effort in every training session and with my diet, but it was just mad to see when I looked back to see like the photos from before I started working with him and like after a year, it was like in that one year I made more progress than I did in like nine years before him (laughs) i used to write my own programs before i got my coach and obviously like i have a lot of knowledge i don't have um an education but i've read like loads of general articles and reviews and stuff online and so i do have the knowledge but whenever i write my own program i'm like oh no i can do this next week oh i'll i'll just do a few more reps or less reps oh i'm tired today so i will just take it slow But if you have a coach, you're like, okay, I have to do whatever he says because he said it. (laughs) Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I'm very excited for, like, my next prep to see how much progress I made since. Because, obviously, I was three weeks out before Corona shut down the shows uh, last spring. So I could really see my physique, and I was basically stage ready. So I'm very excited, like, when I actually do compete to compare how my physique was then to how it is in the future because obviously I'm going to try to be the physique I had previously. So I'm very excited to see like the difference I've made. What are some of the challenges challenges that you have faced in, in fitness and as well as in the, you know, the prep side of things? In the beginning with like nutrition and counting calories and stuff, when I first started, I got a bit hooked and I think that's very common, especially for girls. Um, uh, I've not spoken with that many boys about it, but I know for a lot of females, it's common to like start counting calories and then take it a bit too far and be a bit too extreme to the point where you have like a bit unhealthy relationship with food. And that happened with me the first time I started to count. I was very strict. I would eat like not enough calories. And then I would like in the weekends go mad and be like, oh yeah, it's Friday. It doesn't count kind of thing. And then it got to a point where I was like, okay, if I don't get my shit together now, it's going to go really bad. Because obviously I've heard a lot of people with like eating disorders and how difficult it is to get out of it. So I understood that if I didn't change then, it would have gone really bad. So I just stopped tracking like all over. And then I started to focus on like getting stronger instead and like change my goals from like looking good and look like trying to get late into just trying to get stronger inside it's really saved me i think it improved my relationship with food so much but in terms of prep and competing just dieting it is really really hard and it's more difficult than you think because going into it i thought i would be hungry like that would be the only issue but obviously your hormones get like all over the place i lost my period my leptin was all over the place. My hunger cues were like way off. I would just be, I'd be so tired. Because I'm an introvert, it like that got extreme. Like I, I didn't know, knew how to deal with people. I, if I was in a birthday party or something, I would just sit in the corner and not speak because I would be so tired and just drained and I would have no energy. This was like the end of prep, of course. It wasn't like this the whole time. But when your calories go really low and you have really low body fat, your hormones are just not where they should be, which impacts so much more than just like your hunger cues. Um, I was so moody. I had no energy. I was sad all the time. And I'm normally never sad, but like on prep, I get, I get so emotional and I, I, I'm just like in a mood and I feel, I just feel like down all the time, which is very strange for me. So I think that's like for me the most difficult side with prep. Like I love the training, 
uh, like even on my darkest days when I was up and I was like really drained and tired, I would still be excited to go to the gym because it would give me some form of joy and like accomplishment and feel like it would just feel good. But then the rest of the day, I would just be like a zombie, basically. <laughs> yeah, I think I think having a coach through prep is like crucial. I wouldn't have the knowledge, but I wouldn't be able to practice practice it even if I didn't know like everything what to do because you get to a point where you just doubt everything so when I had him to tell me what to do and to tell me stuff was normal and to like ask for advice he would uh, let me know like everything is fine and you're meant to feel like this like that's a part of prep and there's nothing wrong with you it's just something wrong with prep basically (laughs) (laughs) and before going into it as well I would speak to a lot of Uh, female competitors and ask them like how prep really were and like because a lot of people just post ups on their socials like on youtube and instagram they would post like everything that's good about prep but obviously i understood that it can't be all good because you're not meant to look like that and if it was like if it's all good like everyone would do it kind of thing so i would message a couple of them and be like what is really like what's the worst things about prep how do you cope And then they would be really open and honest going into it. I kind of knew a lot more than I think most people do because I think a lot of people just go into it, get a random coach, and then they'll be set on a meal plan for like 1,200 calories for however many weeks. And then after the competition, they're just left by themselves and then they gain like loads of weight, which is very unhealthy and dangerous. And that's... I think that's when eating disorders really happen, when you're just left without any knowledge and by yourself. Especially for me, before going into fitness, like I knew a lot about training and nutrition and the science of the body and stuff like that. But even how much like literature you read, listening to someone's experience about prep and how it was like in the struggle and the ups and the downs, that's when you really get a view in what it's really like. Uh, So I think that's really important and it's really important as well to like get the knowledge out there that it's not all sunshine and roses because it's really not. (laughs) How do you handle nutrition now or not, let's just say maybe when you're not prepping, you know, you have to take it to a different level when you're prepping, but outside of that, how do you go about handling, handling your nutrition? So obviously when I'm on prep, I'll get macros from my coach and then I eat that and I stick to it and no cheating, no cheat meals. I just stick to my macros. Um, but now that I'm off prep and I'm just trying to maintain my weight until I do prep the next time, I'm eating very freely. Like I have no restrictions. I don't count calories. Obviously I'm not going to eat the whole fridge and go crazy because I don't want to <laughs> but uh, but yeah so I'm trying to be conscious and like my main focus now is just to be healthy uh, eat healthy food I try to like incorporate everything all the vegetables and have different foods in every meal so I eat a lot of oats because I really like it um, I have a lot of eggs as well so I try to have eggs every day because the egg yolk is really healthy but yeah so I try to every meal to just have like a wholesome meal with like a lot of vegetables and fruit some grains protein sauce i do have like chocolate and ice cream and crisps and stuff like that once in a while but mainly i find with me if i focus on eating more healthy food and just like increasing the volume of vegetables and healthy food and healthy fats and avocado and fish and stuff like that i don't really crave as much unhealthy food as if I'm trying to not eat unhealthy food, if that makes sense. Because I've had the focus before, like, don't eat that, don't eat that, don't eat that. But then I just end up craving it more. But if I have the mindset of eat more of this, eat more of this and more of this, I just don't crave it that much. A lot of people, when they start to you know look at their diet and say, I want to eat healthier, the first thing that comes to their head is, what do I want to cut out? What should I cut out? What you know, am I eating that is unhealthy that you know needs to go? Instead of going, yeah. you know, the other route and saying, "Oh, well, what am I doing right in my diet? What can I add a little bit more of here and there?" And you know, finding uh, finding the the positives instead of just looking at all the negative things that you're doing. I think if you focus on cutting stuff out, you will just think about the stuff you're cutting out. You will automatically just crave it more. 
Whereas if you think about what to add in, you won't have room to eat as much unhealthy food. So if you're used to eating like unhealthy food every meal, and then you focus on, okay, I'm going to have like three vegetables with each meal, you that will fill you up. So you won't have room to have all unhealthy food. So if you just focus on eating more healthy food, you will want less unhealthy. Does that make sense? Outside of health and fitness and, and competing and all that good stuff, what else do you enjoy on your, I guess maybe if you want to call it your off time? I do really enjoy reading. Uh, I think I think most people like watch TV or Netflix and like YouTube. I watch some YouTube, but mainly I just read. Whenever most like normal people will watch a TV show or something, I would pick up a book. And I'm trying to learn to drive now, so, so I'm taking a lot of time to like practice my driving as well. So getting back into into the fitness side of things, what as far as this year? I know you said 2022 is is kind of the year for the com- competition and everything, but for this year, what kind of major goals do you have? I don't really have. I probably should, but. No, I'm just in a funk because obviously the gyms are shut and I don't know when they will open. Uh, so I think my main goal right now is just to focus on my running and get better at that and also just man- maintain my body composition and my body weight. I think before summer I'll probably cut down a couple of kilos, like one or two only, just to like be summer ready. <laughs> and then whenever the gym opens, I'll probably set some goals that are gym related, but there will probably be like strength goals. Uh, I really want to hit one kilo, 100 kilos in squats. I didn't test my one rep max last year, but I think I was very close to 100 kilos. So I want to get that and then maybe like 110 or 115 in deadlift. And then obviously when I start prepping again, that will be like my main focus just to get competition ready. Is there any date in the future where they're thinking that the gyms are maybe going to open back up? No, they just keep extending it. So three weeks before Christmas, they were going to shut for three weeks. And then they said three more weeks and then three more weeks and then three more weeks. So I have no clue. Uh, But Oslo is being really strict. So to be honest, I don't think it will open before like March earliest, maybe like mid-March. But I can't see it opening anytime soon. What's the uh, vaccine situation like? Yeah, there? Uh, so they started, uh, but they're really slow. I don't, I can't remember how many they've done now. But they started the last week of December, I think. Here are the malls like the sunbirds. You can go get your nails done. You can go to the hairdresser. Like everything is open, but the gyms are shut. So I think it's pretty stupid. Like bars and stuff are closed. Restaurants are open, but not allowed to sell alcohol. Uh, but the fact that you can go to a shopping center, but you can't go to the gym, is, in my opinion, stupid. A lot of people, you know, that's that's part of their their mental health too, is is declining because they yeah. that's part of what they love doing. That's part of just getting their um, their stress, you know, from their day. You know, getting it gone is just going and working out and releasing all that. So certainly. I think yeah. they got to figure that out. Yeah, I think a lot of people are struggling with their mental health without going to the gym. Uh, luckily, I've I've never had any mental health issues. Uh, so I'm very lucky, lucky with that. But I have a couple of friends that are really struggling that now that the gym is shut. Uh, and I know, like, across everywhere, like, a lot of people I follow on Instagram have been very open about having, like, binge eating issues and, like, really, like, struggling to cope and, just from the gym being shut and being very sad and like some people even becoming depressed because they can't train. Uh, so I think it's very serious. Of course, Corona is too, but I think, I think because there's, they've done a lot of research on Corona at the gym and the research shows that it's basically like 0.00001 chance of being, getting Corona at the gym, basically. So I think it's, having factoring in everything else that is wrong with the gyms being shut. I don't think it weighs up for the gyms being shut for Corona because I think it's more negative. I think everybody's just ready to, you know, get back into the gym, get back to 
their their healthy lifestyle and that's part of it I think is too just like figuring out okay if I'm not going to the gym what am I going to do today kind of thing and that's where a lot of new habits might form that maybe may not be the best um, you know healthiest things and but you know like I said hopefully that all that can be solved here pretty soon with the vaccine and and we can kind of get over this so if you had to give one piece of advice for for women what kind of advice would you give them about, you know, getting into fitness if they're trying, you know, they're looking to, you know, start maybe working out, eating healthier? What advice would you give? Maybe just to educate yourself because I've learned the more knowledge I have about training and nutrition, the easier it is and the easier it is to be nice to yourself throughout the process. Because I, I, know, I feel like a lot of people don't really know and understand calories and macros but they will still count and then they don't really understand the downside of going too low. Like I have so many people messaging me being like, oh, I'm eating 800 calories and I'm not losing weight. What is wrong? And I'm like, how, how are you eating 800 calories? Like you will die. Like you can't do that. And people, because they don't have the knowledge of what can happen if you under eat and if you don't eat enough and they don't understand the concept of, how the metabolism actually works uh they just know like if you eat less than you burn you'll lose fat and yes that's how you do it but you need to know more than that so i think my best advice is to find like trustworthy sources and read up like watch youtube listen to podcasts if you don't like to read like you can do that instead and just get like actual real information that is science-based uh, because then you won't go into the trap of like eating zero calories and running five miles a day and wanting to die. Uh, right. so yeah, that's that's my main tip. If you would like, you could you can let the people know. I know you mentioned it at the beginning, but where they can get a hold of you, where they can find you. Yeah, so on my Instagram is to C R S underscore fit, and then I'm also on YouTube. I think I should. Probably I should know my YouTube handle, but I think it's the same as on Instagram. Yeah, Sophia S underscore fit on YouTube as well. Um, so you can find me there. I use like I reply to every DM I get. Uh, so if there's any questions, you can just DM me and I'll get back to you quite quick. And same on YouTube. If you comment, I'll reply there. So if you have any questions about me or anything, you can just ask there. Well, awesome. Definitely appreciate you coming on. Appreciate your time. Yeah. No, thank you so much for having me. All righty. That is the podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. And once again, subscribe wherever you're listening now. And other than that, that is it for today's episode. So until next time, we are out.